everyone. So part two of researching and ordering uh, Ford Raptor. Now, I, uh, in my last video I talked about, now I know which dealership I'm gonna go with. Now it's time to start going around and looking at the options in person, especially things like the colors, because you have to look at colors in person, because things a lot of times, even on, on the internet, the, the colors look much different in person than they do on video or pictures or whatnot. And I want to see some of the options in person as well. So I, I, I have my local dealership. They don't charge above MSRP. So I know I can, I can get it from them without having to play these markup games on the pricing. Um, I started going around to all the other local dealers because most of them only had like one or two in stock just to kind of see them. Uh, long story short, I went to seven other dealerships. Um, four in New Jersey and three in Pennsylvania. Every single dealership I went to, with the exception of the one that I found that I'm gonna buy from, had market adjustment prices on these trucks at a minimum of $5,000. Most of them were $10,000. Now, um, it's unfortunate that this happens, that Ford really doesn't police this. You know, they, they, they seem to put a lot of effort into policing people reselling Ford GTs, but it seems like a lot of these dealers are getting really crazy with these price markups. I've heard of markups even over $10,000, but unfortunately it is what it is. So, originally I was looking at probably getting a blue truck because my last two sports cars were red. So I was like, oh, you know, I like blue. I want to maybe get a blue truck. I wanted to see Velocity Blue and Performance Blue in person, see what they were like. Um, okay, wasn't really that impressed, but one thing that I noticed with the Raptors specifically was even if you've seen a Ford color before, like, uh, like I'll talk about race red. I had no intention of buying a red truck, but the thing I noticed is the Raptors look unique in a given color compared to the same color on another vehicle. I went to one dealership, they had a race red Raptor there. Now, I don't know if it's a combination of all the, the, uh, the gray trim on the truck or if there's more clear coating on it or whatever it is, but they had a race red Raptor next to a race red F-250, like just a regular work truck, nothing special. And the colors look completely different. Like I went there with my father and I'm standing there and I'm looking at one truck, I'm looking at the other because they're right next to each other. And I'm, I'm saying to him, I'm like, tell me you see this too. We went and looked at both window stickers. They were both race red, brand new trucks. And the colors look completely different. I'm like, tell me you're seeing this, right? He goes, yeah, I see it. He goes, this, this Raptor, this color looks like it pops a lot more than this F-250. So I'm like, I'm like, do they put more clear coating on it? Is it a combination of the trim? Like, what? He goes, I don't know, but this, this red looks really killer. This has like a lot of pop to it. It really, the paint has a lot of depth to it. So if you're going to look at a Raptor, you have to go look at the colors in person. And I also wanted to look at the, uh, the options in person, um, the, the bead lock, the, after, the bead lock, the optional wheels, because I don't like the standard wheels, and uh, the, the three main packages. There's three packages, the main package of the truck, uh, that are available. 800A, 801A, 802A. Obviously, 802A, that's the one that most people get. That's the one that has a ton of options standard, but it's a very expensive package. Maybe in New Jersey, with tax, it's going to be over $10,000 to get that option package. And this being a secondary vehicle for me, it, just, it doesn't really make sense for me to get all those options because when I was going on the website and I would look what each package had and I looked at 802, there was so much stuff in there that I either wasn't going to use that I wasn't interested in having or I really probably wouldn't reap the benefits because I'm not really dailying the truck. It wasn't worth it for me to get all that stuff for only, I think 802 had like 24 things that were that became standard with that package. And there was like three or four that I really wanted in that. And I started looking at like the lower packages, like 800, which is the basic truck and 801. So I'm there, I was like, all right, 801 is probably a good middle ground. It gives you a little bit more stuff. I wish they would put more stuff in 801, but it's a good middle of the road. And there's a bunch of things that I can get as individual options that I want. So, cause if you, if you option these trucks out to the max, which is what most dealers have, you can easily with taxes blow past $80,000. I don't want to spend that much on something like this, especially for something I'm not gonna use as a daily. So for what I'm looking at 801 with some options without going crazy, I'm probably looking like low 60s, give or take in that before taxes and whatnot. 
Um, because the nice thing about the Raptors is whether you go with the basic spec or the really high-end spec, everything that makes a Raptor a Raptor is all the same. Same engine, same transmission, same drivetrain, same suspension, same body, same chassis. All that stuff's the same. It's just how crazy you want to get with the electronics package. The only mechanical difference is the front differential, which you can get as an option in 800 or 801 and then standard in 802 is that, that big package. So my concern with getting the 802 packages when i was doing the research like i said there's no widespread problems with this truck but the things i started seeing people talk about more than once were related to the 802 package which is mostly electronic stuff problems with things like the proximity key problems with the 360 degree camera problems with the um the blind spot monitors that stuff came up more than once and that's the kind of thing where i'm worried if this turns into more of a long-term ownership because unfortunately the warranty for that stuff is only three years or thirty-six thousand miles and i'm gonna blow past three years long before i hit thirty-six thousand miles most likely um maintaining this truck is gonna turn into again potentially the same issue that people have that buy things like mercedes or bmw or fancy luxury cars as they get older the the core things like the engine transmission may be fine but it's the secondary things are what start to have a, a lot of problems and have the potential to really hurt the values of them as they get older because yeah it, it's great if you know the, the truck works fine and that's fine but it can hurt the values a lot if a lot of the electronics start to go bad after three years because when it's under warranty you don't really care but three years is not a long time and if, if they're five years six years you know within 10 years you start to have a lot of electronics issues it can be really expensive to get that stuff fixed because you can't, most people do not have the capabilities to just, you know, put, put, the, put the truck in their garage and say, oh, I gotta fix the blind spot monitors. I gotta fix my proximity key. You can't fix that stuff yourself anymore. You can't swing a wrench and fix that stuff. You have to go back to the dealer. You can't even go to a lot of independent places and have them fix that. You have to go back to the dealer. And a lot of times it can get very expensive to fix that stuff. Because then if you don't fix it, it really hurts the, the value when you, if you wanna go to resell it down the road and if you do want to fix it, it's usually going to be fairly expensive. So for me, I think a more simple, tr a simple truck as far as the electronics and the packages go, I think that's where I'm going to end up. Probably super cab, not super crew, because I, I don't need the extra space. So um, a smaller, lighter truck that's considerably cheaper than a super crew, and it'll fit in the garage a little bit better anyway. I'll probably race red unless they come out with some new, new colors, because when I went to go look at the colors in person, I found that was the nice. I looked at almost every single color in person, and I thought that color stood out the best in person and looked the best in person, uh, contrary to what I saw in videos and photos. And probably 801 with probably different wheels, uh, and then a few things, the spray in bed liner, I'll throw the better differential in, uh, and then a few other options here and there. Because unfortunately, long gone are the days where you can really piece a truck together, where you can pick individual options. Most things are packages now. And for me to pay the extra ten thousand dollars for the 802 package for like one extra thing that I want, it just it doesn't really justify. It. And I don't want Raptor technology. I don't want the stickers. I don't want the moon, the moon roof. A lot of that stuff, the carbon, that the stuff you have to get 802 anyway just to get it. And I can live without that stuff. This being a second interview, I think the truck comes pretty well. Even in the 800 truck, the truck comes pretty well spec as a base level truck. So it's really not that basic, but. I don't need all. I don't need or really want any of the crazy electronics that it comes with. Because I'm just, I'm a little too worried down the road that could become problematic, and I don't want to buy an extended warranty, pay all that extra money um, for all these electronics that may or may not have issues. So that's kind of my feeling on the, the truck and, and ordering it. Um, and the big X factor with the Raptors now is this GT500 Raptor that may or may not be coming out because everybody's kind of speculating, you know that. Ram's gonna put the Hellcat engine in their 1500 and make it like a like a Super Raptor fighter. So the question is, is Ford gonna do this to counter? There's a ton of rumors going around, like during April, that this was gonna happen, but it's been really quiet since then. We haven't heard much. And then the other fact, the other two factors are, how limited is this gonna be? Like, am I even gonna be able to remotely get this thing? And what's this thing gonna cost? Because I have a feeling this is gonna be a six-figure truck. It's probably gonna be super expensive, and. Um, I, I might not even be able to get one because even a dealership that gets a lot of allotments might only get one or two. So that's kind of the other factor. And then a lot of people are speculating that a V8 may come back. Um, 
my opinion on the whole V8 thing is, I think the V6 sounds pretty darn good. Some of my coworkers, I've heard their trucks when they romp on it, and it, I think those things sound pretty darn good for a, for what they are. I mean, yeah, it doesn't have traditional V8 sound, but like my Viper when I had it didn't have the V8 sound. I thought the thing sounded pretty darn good. Um, if you look at what Ford has right now for V8 engines, they have the standard 5 liter that they have in the regular F-150. There's a new 7.3 coming out, but if you look at how that thing is, is put together, that looks like a work truck the engine, like they're going to put in their super duties. I don't think that's a performance-based engine at all. And then um, whatever happens with this GT500 Power 1, I think it'll definitely be a special edition. I do not think that's going to be the standard run-of-the-mill engine at all because it's going to be a probably really expensive package. So... Um, my question that I pose to other people, that their own routers are looking at them, I'm like, look, everybody complains about the sound. I really don't think it's that bad. Yes, a V8 does have a really nice traditional, nice sound to it. I think V8s do sound good, but all right, put it this way. Right now, in the regular F-150, the 3.5 EcoBoost is the premium engine. It has the most amount of power, performance, uh, towing capabilities, etc. Um, like the V8's kind of in the middle right now. I'm like, if they, say they did that with the Raptor, say they offered the five liter in it, even if they hyped it up a little bit, they got a little better performance out of it, but it wasn't the top engine. They still had the EcoBoost in the Raptor, whether this was for second gen or third gen, but the, the V6 was still the premium engine, had the best performance, and had, been, had better performance over the V8. What would you get? Would you go for the V8 over the sound, or would you go for the EcoBoost over the performance? And most people said, well, I'm still gonna stick with the EcoBoost because it's a better performing engine. I was like, well, that, that's kind of how it goes, but that's kind of, I think, how, how it goes with what most people would say, but. Um, I guess we're going to have to wait and see kind of what happens. My personal opinion, I don't think the V is coming back in the second generation, and I don't know if it's ever going to come back. I think it's a lot easier to get better performance out of forced induction, and I think we'll see a V8 with this GT500. I think there's a really good possibility they're, they're going to do it because I don't think Ford's going to uh, let Ram really pass them up. I think Ford's definitely going to create an answer to this new Hellcat power Ram that seems to be there's all these spy photos of, but... Um, I think that's really the only V8 we're going to see. It's going to be the super expensive, super special edition truck that's probably going to be really hard to get. So uh, I'll keep everyone posted as time goes on. I just spoke to Tom today. Um, he said I was in the area. I just stopped in and spoke to him. I was like, look, I know it's kind of early, but you guys hear anything more on the orders? He goes, let me check. He goes, no, the 2020 F-150 information is not out yet. Um, give me a call another month or two, closer to July, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know then. So I'll keep everybody posted kind of where I'm at with ordering this truck and where we're going from there. I hope you enjoy the video so far. Thanks for watching.